seek out support. Tammy Hines doesn't just work at the Hogg Foundation for Mental Health at UT Austin. She knows firsthand what it's like to cope with anxiety and major depressive disorders. I heard somebody describe it as a blackness once, as a hole that you feel is just sucking you in. Um, you truly feel like there is no purpose to your existence. She spent years isolating herself before she got help. Every year, one in four adults are diagnosed with a mental illness. In Texas, the numbers continue to grow, but the resources for people to get help are woefully low. Even worse, since the Texas legislature declined to raise funding levels for mental health services during the 2011 session. We spend less per capita on public mental health services than any other state in the union. And actually, we even spend less than the District of Columbia, so technically we're 51st. Hogg Foundation director and psychiatrist Octavio Martinez says that out of 254 counties in Texas, 181 don't have a single psychiatrist. That means people with mental health problems often have nowhere to turn. The result? Public and private psychiatric hospitals were already swamped. New stories every day, it seems, about Texans with mental health issues hurting themselves, hurting others. In the course of everybody's lifetime, about half the folks will have a psychiatric illness. Austin Travis County Integral Care Medical Director and Psychiatrist Jim Van Norman says his numerous psychiatric facilities are maxed out and the shortage of prescribers is a serious long-term challenge. Probably getting close to 700 individuals on each doc's caseload. And there just gets, gets to a place you can't squeeze anybody else in and, and we find ourselves having to develop wait lists and maintain a waiting list for services because we don't have room to bring new folks in. But it's hard to find psychiatrists. In psychiatry, the burnout rate is high. Medicaid reimbursement rates are low. In Texas, the problem is exacerbated by several factors. Mental health funding has been perpetually scarce, and there aren't enough training programs for those who want to specialize. So then you have less psychiatrists being uh, coming out of residency. And we well know where you train, especially residency-wise, it's not only true for psychiatry, but also for all the other mental health professions, you use, that's usually where you stay. So if we're not going to provide the slots, as they call them, in, in our residencies to hold on to who we train, well, how are we going to expect to grow that workforce? Then Norman says psychiatrists can help prevent those who deal with mental health issues from taking out their struggles on others. From a practical standpoint, offering treatment saves the hospitals, the justice system, and taxpayers a lot of money. Medications are sufficient in and of themselves to, to treat and maintain somebody in the community, but they're core and they're essential. That if, you, if I can get a patient on a medication, then they can begin to take advantage of psychotherapy counseling. They can work on other skills, work with our uh, staff who are non, not prescribers about, you know, skills of daily living. Tammy Hines never hurt anyone, but she did reach a point where she says she very nearly took her own life. One day, I just had this thought, why would I be willing to try that if I'm not willing to try medication? Because I had been very anti-medication. She says that medication, combined with intensive behavioral therapy, pulled her out of that dreaded black hole. It was such a dramatic change that I had forgotten what that felt like. It was, it was amazing, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is why I want to live. This is why I want to live. I don't want to be that person again. In Austin, this is Tontan with the Texas Tribune.